Okay, welcome back. Let's go over quiz one now. I'll write this up here so you know that it's quiz one, even though it says exam up there, but you know, when you print these out, they all say the same title. But this, in fact, is quiz one. The first question, which of the following compounds are constitutional isomers? Well, remember that constitutional isomer is an isomer in which the molecular formula is the same, but the connections at which the atoms are made are different, right? The structure is different. So this is actually a super easy question because you can look at these and see that um, structure one or compound one has one, two, three chlorines, right? Structure two has one, two, three, four chlorines, right? So already you know those two are on the constitution isomers. Structure three has one, two chlorines. So that can't be that one. So neither two or structure three. But then structure four has one, two, three chlorines. So the answer then would be structure one and structure four, A. Okay, now it says to draw the correct Lewis, stru uh, Lewis structure for the molecule below, okay? Um, right here we have a First thing to check out here is that we have a CH3, right? Before you even think about, let's start eliminating things, right? And you have a CH3, you have a methyl group right there, okay? In structure number two, doesn't even have a methyl group in it. In fact, it has a hydrogen connected by two bonds, right? That's a travesty right there. So it's definitely not that one, okay? Like before you even like start trying to think about how many valence electrons there are and how many bonds you need to make and how to fill in the octets, just, you know, eliminate the ones that are, like, impossible, okay? And what else is impossible here? It can't be number three either because you have a carbon here with a lone pair and only two bonds. That octet's not even filled. So it can't be number three, okay? So, so far, you've already eliminated two answers. And you've never, you didn't even have to remember any of the, the Lewis structure uh, drawing rules, okay? Let's keep on going here. Um... Look at structure five. That oxygen right there in the middle, it has one, two, three, four, five times two means 10. That's 10 electrons on that oxygen right there. Is that even possible? No, you violated the octet rule there, so it can't be structure five either, okay? Can't be structure five either. Come over here and take a look at structure one. Structure one has the same problem <laughs> as structure, um, uh, which one was it that did that? Uh, yeah, structure three. Structure one had the same problem as structure three. There's a carbon right here with a lone pair and two bonds. No notation of charge, anion or something. Is it a carb anion? Is it a carb cation? So definitely not that one. So you've eliminated all these loose dot structures except for one just because they violate obvious chemistry rules, right? So let's take a look at number four. Let's just make sure it's not a trick. Let's make sure number four is right here. We've got our methyl group, okay? We've got a carboxylate right here, right? It's carboxylic acid, which makes sense. Carbon right there, oxygen one, oxygen two, and then a hydrogen. So that is it. Answer number uh, the answer for number two is D, structure four. So the point of that question was just like was just to demonstrate to you not to think too much about these things, right? Like if you go through and to calculate all the valence electrons and then figure out what the central atom is and then fill in all the octets, you're really wasting time, right? You can go through and do your easy chemistry stuff first, which is, <laughs> does everybody have the, the right number of bonds and the right number of electrons, right? Okay, so next. Which element has the following electronic configuration? Whoops, scrolled a little bit too far there, sorry. Which element has the following electron configuration, okay? So we don't even really care about the one S orbital, do we, right? because we're past uh, row one of the periodic table. So all we really care about these, all right? How many electrons do you see there? There's seven, right? Which element is the only element that's in group seven in that group right there? Definitely not carbon, carbon's in group six, right? 
Definitely not. Uh, yeah, sorry, carbon is in group four, rather. Um, definitely not boron. Nitrogen is group five, right? Silicon, nope, definitely not. So fluorine is the only one that has a valence number of electrons being seven. So it's definitely fluorine. Answer is B there. Okay, let's look at number four. Here, here's an easy one, right? Oh man, I'm just like scrolling way too far. Here we go. Which bonding type has circular symmetry with respect to the bond axis? Right? Well, you've got to think about this as first, uh, their individual orbitals, right? Remember which orbital was actually symmetrical. The only one that's symmetrical is the 1s orbital, right? Because it's a, it's a sphere around the bond axis, right? You bring two 1s orbitals together, and what do you have? You have a sigma bond. And what, it, what does it look like? It looks like a little oval or, a, or ellipt, elliptical, right? Or ellipse, right? Just to show you that in, in a drawing, I'll draw out the orbitals here. Okay. Okay. And if you have just 1s orbitals, if this one bond line, would, uh, one axis line would draw, here's the 1s orbital. Here's another 1s orbital. And remember that 1s orbital is just a sphere in the center. Okay. Would you bring those together to make a molecular orbital, right? What do you get? It's like I'm losing my connection to my Apple Pencil. The lines aren't drawing, right? You bring that together and then those spheres become an ellipse. So what's symmetrical about the, the x-axis? I'm uh, sorry, the bond axis? That would be a sigma bond. Answer D. So remember your basic chemistry there, right? Next question. Which molecular orbitals are formed when a 1s orbital from two hydrogen atoms, right, combine to form one hydrogen molecule? Well, remember the rule that I told you at the very beginning, right? If you have two atomic orbitals and you want to make molecular orbitals, how many do you end up with? Two molecular orbitals, right? It's always going to be the same number of molecular orbitals as you began in atomic orbitals. The only difference though is that when you had two atomic orbitals before, they were both the same. Whereas when you turn it into the molecular orbitals, you get a bonding molecular orbital, which is lower energy, that's where the electrons go, right? And then you have an anti-bonding molecular orbital, which is higher energy than the, even the 1s orbital, right? And so that's higher energy and there won't be any electrons in there at all. So what is the answer to number five? Uh, definitely not two bonding molecular orbitals. Definitely not only one anti-bonding molecular orbital, right? Not, definitely not two anti-bonding molecular orbitals and definitely not one. So all those are wrong. The only one that's correct is C, which is one bonding molecular orbital and one anti-molecular orbital, right? So the answer there is C. All right, let's move on to number six. Hopefully I don't lose connection here. There we go. How many atoms are connected to the indicated carbon atom right there? Or sorry, hydrogens, hydrogen atoms? Well, that's pretty simple. We've got a triple bonded carbon right there, and it's connected to another carbon. That's already four bonds, right? Carbon can only have four bonds. Don't be like that one guy that thought it had six or 12 bonds, right? So obviously there are no hydrogens on that one. The answer there is E. Okay. Next question. What is the hybridization state of the nitrogen atom in the following compound? Okay. So how do you figure out the hybridization state? Easy as pie, right? Count up the number of electron domains, both bonding domains and lone pair domains. We have one, two, three, four, right? That's the three bonds right there, plus the lone pair. That gives you four bonding domains. That means it's a steric number of four. One of them has to be an S orbital. The other three have to be P orbitals. So that gives you the sp3 hybridized nitrogen. Next. What is the molecular geometry of the nitrogen 
atom in the following compound. So you have a bent nitrogen here because you have the lone pair at the top, right? And generally, if it were sp3 hybridized, it would be trigonoplanar. But since this nitrogen is actually double bonded on one side, it doesn't have a third side anymore to make it trigonoplanar, right? So now it's only bent. So this sp2 nitrogen right here, right, is bent. The answer is D. Number nine. What is the hybridization state of the molecular and the molecular geometry around the carbon atom and the molecule shown in the box? Right. Well, this is pretty simple. Carbon is in the center, of course. It's the only one that is uh, uh, almost said quadrivalent, uh, tetravalent. Mean, I mean, right? It's going to have a double bond to the oxygen, just like it always does, carbonyl wise. And then it will have chlorines on the other two bonds, right? This is an sp2 hybridized carbon, right? Three bonding domains, one, two, three. I mean, sorry, three electron domains, one, two, three, which means that the steric number is three, which means that it's an sp2 because one of them is s and the other two are p's, right, in hybridization. And sp2 hybridized carbons have what kind of geometry? They're trigonal planar, except I don't know why I drew an S, wrote an S there. They're trig planar, right? And a trigonal planar uh, hybridization results in a what? 120 degree bond angle, okay? So that's the answer is D. Last but not least, we have our friend and your friend, the, uh, the molecule tryptophan, right? Very important amino acid. Some people think it makes you sleepy when you eat it in Turkey, right? It's an essential amino acid, important for the synthesis of the neurotransmitted serotonin. Identify the hybridization states and the molecular geometry and the approximate bond angles for each for the atom indicated. So we have here the arrow pointed at a carbon, right? That carbon here only has three bonds to it, which means the last bond has an, a hydrogen on it, right? That looks like it's going to be sp2, right? One electron domain, two electron domains, three electron domains. That's three steric numbers, right? Uh, the steric number three. And then, uh, which means that it's an sp2 hybridized carbon because one of them is s, two of them are p's. And when you have something like that, it's a trigonal planar. And so the bond angles are going to be 120 degrees. And which one is the only one that matches up with that? That is E... The answer is E there. Join me again for when we go over quiz two. Thank you.